a look inside if you want to. Yes, please. So do you want to see? Yeah, I'd love to see. Right, so today's Explore is something a little bit special. I am off to a place called St. Patrick's Church in Liverpool 8, just at the end of Park Road. Now, today they have an open day. It is currently Heritage Weekend in September. This happens every September, basically in a nutshell. Places that are not normally accessible to the public are open to the public for public viewing. So I've seen this advert on Facebook and uh, they said, come down to St. Pat's, we have an open day, and also take a tour of the crypt. Now, I've had this on my radar for quite a while now, and it's something that like, I was given information about ages ago and a contact number and I just I, I just haven't sort of seen it through. Other things get in the way, other ideas and videos have, have sort of like got in the way. So today I thought, you know what, let's just get down there on an open day and um, see what's what. But today is a little bit special as well. Uh, it's currently two till six o'clock and there's two tours of the church and two tours of the crypt but I've been given uh, my own little tour of the place before it opens to the general public. So that is absolutely amazing and I still can't believe it as well. So today I'm going down to meet, I think neither a geologist or an archeologist because this place is still uh, an ongoing sort of um, excavation. Currently there was, well, originally there was, I think 7,000 bodies found there and then further excavations uncovered, I think a further 7,000 maybe, I don't know. It's a church I've never really given much thought to. I know my dad, I think he used to go, or he still goes, because it still is an active church. And I've, I said, I've always wanted to see inside this crypt, and I am bloody excited because there's no video of it, and there's one or two pictures which I've seen online. So to get down there in a private tour as well of my own, um, is absolutely fantastic. I can't believe it. As soon as you come down and see it, it just dominates the the, the skyline, if you want to call it, of Park Road and uh, surrounding areas. So yeah. So without further ado, as I say, I'm just off now to go meet neither an archaeologist or geologist. I'm not sure to be honest with you. I you know can't remember. And uh, they're going to take me around and hopefully bring you guys and gals some very historical, interesting content. So without further ado, I shall catch you at St. Patrick's Church. Come on. Hello. There you go, girl. Hey. I've got nothing for you, sorry. All right. Let you go on your way. Right, so let's have a little walk around St. Pat's before we go in. So that's the entrance to the vaults. Um, entrance to the burial vaults, just there. Look at the scale of the place. Absolutely massive. And shamefully, like I said before, um, I grew up around the area and I hung around around the area when I was a kid and I have never stepped foot up this way or kind of in the church and whatnot. So it's nice to see this uh, in the flesh now and up close and personal. Size of it. Absolutely massive. So it's just at the end of Park Road with the junction of Hill Street just over there. So there are tours on today, but I'm a little bit pressed for time. So the crypt was the main focus of the video today. And I'll just have a quick little look around the church now. There's currently a talk on and a bit of a tour, so I might um, have a little look at that for a bit and then probably get off. So if anyone remembers Sussex Gardens, uh, it was just over that wall and it sort of remains just further on past these houses. There's, they just rebuilt them and remodernised them all. So, yep, quick look around. So give you the scale of the place quite nice as well. Tony has done a fantastic job keeping this place looking good. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, just look at it. Right, so I am just about to enter the crypt in St. Patrick's with Maria, and she's going to take me down there before all the uh, people get in crowds get here, so she's going to give me a little tour of the place and um, tell me what's what. St. Patrick's crypt is believed to contain the bones of many thousands of refugees who fled the Irish famine, along with those who fell victim to a devastating typhus epidemic that swept Liverpool in 1847. The opening of St. Patrick's Church was incredibly important in burying the rapidly growing Catholic population in the early 19th century. Between the remaining church records and records held by other churches in the city, we can estimate around 15,000 burials took place here between 1827 and 1854. So far, very few human remains have been found. It seems very likely that sometime after the opening of Ford Cemetery in 1859, all the burials were exhumed and charnel pits emptied, then moved there. But there is no documented evidence of this ever happening. This is St. Patrick's crypt. Um, it's underneath the church. And as soon as you come in, we've got um, four bricked up vaults. This first one has got um, four of the bodies of the martyr priests who died in the typhoid epidemic in 1847. And one of those is um, Joseph Marr, who is one of the brothers. Nice. Um, and then if we come through this way. The wealthier families had vaults down in this area, um, but not all of the wealthy families had a vault. So a lot of them we found were buried up in the burial grounds as well. The vaults that are down here, we've, we only have four that are still in the same situation as they mm -hmm. would have been. Yeah. Um, and the archaeology team from the University of Liverpool have been inside them and do know which coffins inside this are inside one. Ah. all of these, yeah. yeah, yeah. I almost, almost walked past that one as well. I think that was the one I've seen on a picture. Yeah. Um, I think Michael was stood by it or something, but... Yeah. Wow. Marsh family. Yeah. So they tend to be merchants, the, the people who are in these. Yeah. Um, we've got the Berry family in this one as well. So what you also find is that the families are all interconnected. They're all working together, they're in business together, their families are socialising together, mm -hmm. they've got yeah. parents for each other's children. So there's a huge network. Peter Roberts was the first burial in the vaults. He was buried in 1828. 1828. The first burial in the churchyard itself was 1827. Wow. That we is... can have a look inside if you want to. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So this is still very much a sacred space. And um, we have the coffins in here of Mary Roberts, Peter Roberts, um, husband and wife and then we have Teresa Elizabeth who was we think their daughter-in-law and their two small coffins are Edward and Aloysius and they would be Peter's nice. grandchildren. Would these eventually get sealed up like the, the ones we've just seen then? No this one's always been sealed with the, the heavy door. This one's never actually been bricked. There is another vault under the floor here um, which is carved into the sandstone and down there there's an adult coffin which we think is Elizabeth Roberts and another child coffin which is another Edward. Wow. I've never seen a coffin in that state before. That is They're incredible. Aren't wow. They? That yeah. is just Yeah. That is fascinating. There is another Roberts burial as well in the churchyard. Um his son was buried up in the churchyard oh, right. too. So he's not actually in this vault. And you do find that for various people. Robert's vault. That is brilliant. That, that is the original door as well, I it take is, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The door was made by Blount Foundry down on Wood Street, the Eagle Foundry. Um, and it's got just a plate at the very bottom there that tells you who made it. Oh, yeah, did you see that there? Yeah. That was owned by Walter Blount. He was another prominent Catholic. And we've also got um, some burials in the churchyard too ah, of cool. the families, and that will be Michael upstairs. 
brilliant. Absolutely fascinating. So we've got some grey slabs on the floor here, which we believe have been brought in from outside um, to basically give a nice even walking surface. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is very possibly one of the original burials down here, bearing around. Has that been slightly restored as well, has it? Yeah. It has, yeah. It's been infilled so that it can be read easily. Brilliant. Oh, yeah, sorry, just seeing a picture of uh, Tony there, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's just a vent, is it? That's a vent, yeah. Wow. I love it. Absolutely love it. So we can walk through here. These are the, the part that you're walking on. Are, we have been burial pits that are uh, the big of bones. They were used as charnel pits. Um, the bodies were removed and we think they were put in Fort Cemetery. So these have all been refilled with whatever rubbish was around at the time. Um, and an awful lot of coke and clinker that's come out of furnaces. Oh yeah. Wow. So some of the finds here, which um, tend to be kerosene tanks really, which would have been used to keep the church warm for the original boilers. That's fascinating, oh. absolutely. All the years, as I say, I've been going past and I didn't know this was under there. I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't quite know what to expect. I thought it might be a big one and... Yeah. Some people have said it, it oh, some people have said it went on the park road and no, um, it's just literally under the church. So this will give you an idea of how deep the pits are. This one's been partially cleared. And the sandstone at the back, just up there, is part of the sandstone ridge that the church is built on. It was wow. quarried before the church was built. Wow. Some old bottles as well. Yeah. Uh, corporation Liverpool, isn't it? I think. Like school milk Yeah, yeah, a little. Wow. Yeah. And this is a burial pit that's been completely emptied. Ooh. The University of Liverpool archaeology team are involved with the research in this area. Are they still quite active doing this, are they? Yes. It reminds me of, have you seen the, the Friends of Williamson Tunnels? Yes. It, it's a, like it's like that, the underground part, that's not is, normally open. It, yeah. It's just yeah. absolutely fascinating. Yeah. I can hear people above. I thought that was a yeah. concrete uh, ceiling. There. No. Is that a date on the ceiling? 15th or something, looks like 74. It could be. There's, there's various bits of, of carving into the wall at the back that someone's initials. Oh, you got the old style. Uh, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Me dad me made up seeing this because he's never been down here. <clears throat> One of the more curious finds when they were clearing out the um, area towards the back of the altar was a um, mummified cat who's been named Tom after the chap who found him. So do you want to see? Yeah, I'd love to see. Yeah. Wow. There we go. He's naturally mummified and was found behind the altar. Um, Tom Fitzgerald, who found him, has advised us that sometimes cats were included in buildings, um, but there's no evidence that Tom was included. Yeah. Um, we, we think he was probably a crypt cat who lived down here. And oh, just solely lived in the crypt? He probably lived mm. in the crypt on the churchyard and kept the rodent population down. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. So probably been pretty busy. Yeah, mummified cats have been found in various old buildings from time to time, yeah. <coughs> wow. <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> we'll leave him covered so he doesn't yeah, keep him warm. Yes. There we go. Okay. So if we go back around, I can show you some more of the finds yeah, that cool. come out of the pits. So this is a selection of finds that um, Tony and Louise have discovered uh, when they've been clearing out through the, the pits. Um, Simple prayer book. I think I've got yeah. one of them in the house from, uh, from school. Not as old as that one, but yeah. six pence. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
London Catholic. Man, oh, yeah, I didn't see that one. Oh, man, shoot. Oh, wow, look at that ca capstan. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that matches. I love old bottles. They're just so interesting. Yeah, I found loads over the years. Charles Shoe as well. Wow. Yeah. What's that one say? That one says. Oh, it's a milk. Yeah, pasteurised milk. You know, I can. <laughs> <laughs> you can join. Just checking everything's okay. Yeah, people are yeah. arriving already. Gosh. It's fascinating. Hiya, Anna. Hiya. Hiya. Um, do you want me to do something with these? Yeah, okay. It was just to stop people getting spiked with them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got them down for I haven't been carrying them this whole time. Have you? <laughs> no, I haven't. You haven't. Okay, that's fine. If you think we can use them, then that's it. Shall I go have a, I can, I can have a try and just see if yeah. I think it's too windy. Yeah, where did you put your bag? Oh, it's just in a box at the side of the table. Okay, I was just wondering. Piece of statue. Under our table, because if you leave it under our table, the family history one will be somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Some old life okay. fixtures as well, is it there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a little fuse board. Oh, so. right, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, various sets of rosary beads. Spoon, oh, paint pot, some paint left in it. Yeah. Wow. That is fascinating, that. Yeah. Absolutely fascinating. And then just by the door, we've got some larger stones that are from Baroche in as well. So we've got Thomas and Sarah Maguire and John Hugh and Pam Rooney. From Africa. Yeah, he was he was on a, a ship. Um, he died of fever, and um, they, they'd have been bringing back ivory wood. Yeah. <coughs> uh, he didn't make it back. Brilliant. There was a shovel came up with one of the. Um, I think he, he must have moved it, and it was a proper like grave digger shovel. Was it? Yeah. It was oh. brilliant. I don't know where he put it after. I just love the way, I did not know it was sat on sandstone. Yeah. You got a little. Yeah. Brilliant. It's just the attention to detail. Yeah, I, I, as I said, I didn't know what to expect and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised to say it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. It is. Yeah. These are just ones they say they're going to get end up getting dug out. That's okay. Is that, if we just stand there, I'll just is that okay. Just, um, that was an option for Tom. Wow. Completely and utterly um, blown away by it, should we say? It's just absolutely. It's incredible, isn't it? It's so well. It is, yeah. yeah. Goodbye, Tom. <laughs> I won't tell me cats. I've seen them. No, 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 no. I don't get very upset. upset. <clears throat> wow, the size of that. Yeah. So it's a crucifix and a chalice. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's brilliant, that. Size. I've never seen a key. <laughs> so that's big. Huge. That's huge. <laughs> wow, brilliant, that. Absolutely it's heavy brilliant. As it looks. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like the. I like what you've done with it. It's like it's nice. It's nicely presented, isn't it? It's lovely. I mean, Tony has done all of this. All as has I it? All of, yeah. All I've done is the research on the family, so the, the sheets that you read going down. That's all me. Oh, is that all you? Is it? Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, everything. Yeah. Everything. Uh, it just put some context into it. But Louise and Tony have worked really hard down here and just done all of this. Do you think it'll ever open as a heritage centre? I hope so. There's, there's just, you know, there's, there's a massive heritage here that people don't realise in mm. terms of the development of the city. Exactly. Um, because, you know, when this was built, this was on the edge of the countryside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's houses for sale, one of the graves outside, um, there were houses for sale that were owned by the chap 
and they were described as having a clear view of the river. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. but not on, not on in front of it, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, in a healthy aspect. Mm. And it was just Brilliant. completely different. This is Tony. Briefly met Tony before. Yes. Tony, you've done a brilliant job down here. Oh, thanks very absolutely. much. Absolutely. It What's looks. Your name? George. George. Yeah. It looks absolutely fantastic. A fella come from Dombey Street. And he's never been. He's lived here and he didn't even know it was a church, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> Do you want the cake? Shall I leave it there for you? Oh, thanks a lot for that. Really okay. brilliant. I'll, um, I'll, I'll find your donation box. I'll throw some. Uh, throw some cash in for you. Right. So just before I go, this is Tony, the man responsible for pretty much all of the work you see down here today so uh, thank you very much Tony for allowing me down today yeah, and yeah. Uh, hopefully I will see you very soon okay. my friend thank you very much, thank you very much mate all the best. All cheers the best. mate thank, thank you very much right so if anyone remembers St Malachy's that is the bell of the church Right, so that was a look at St. Patrick's Church Crypt on Park Road in Liverpool and a place I've wanted to look inside for quite a while now and wow, I am absolutely blown away. Um, just the level of what's down there is just absolutely mind-blowing. So before I go, I'd like to thank a few people. So Joanne is the first one. Joanne, thank you very much, love, for sorting this out for me. Uh, thank you to Marie as well, or Maria, and also Tony, who I met at the end. Now, Tony is the groundskeeper and he looks after the crypt and he, what he's done down there is absolutely phenomenal. He was just telling me then as well about, um, he excavated something like three skip loads of soil and rubble on his own as well, with very, very minimal help. But if you can help out, get in touch with Tony, uh, get in touch with the church and um, see if you can help out as well because it's an ongoing project as well. There's still excavations going on and uh, and whatnot. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm literally lost for words. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honored, honestly. I'm, I'm absolutely bloody honored to be allowed there just before people turn up and, and get given a, a private tour of the place. So yeah, all good in the hood there. So on that note, uh, thank you for watching, folks. There is lots more content like this coming up in the next couple of, probably a couple of days and weeks. But I've always got stuff on the go as well. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.